Welcome to another video from the Voyager Steam Lab. This is a video uh, about SolidWorks. We are working with SolidWorks for 3D printing, but this video is for a teacup, which we will not be 3D printing because it leads to some problems 3D printing that we're going to learn about later with overhangs, but it is a helpful video for how to um, revolve and how to sweep. So those are the two skills we're going to learn, plus we're going to learn about how to take different um, features that we have created and combine them in different ways. So this is a student example. There are a couple problems with this example. We'll come back and fix it. But you can see that we've revolved the cup and we've set the handle. So that's what we're going to do. Um, our outline, we're going to sketch the cup first, then we're going to revolve it. Once we have that revolved, we're going to shell it just like we shelled the vase. This is the second project that I do with students. So this is after the vase project, but before we do the bracelet. Then we're going to sketch the handle. Um, with an option to sketch a cross section that we could use. We're going to sweep that handle, but it's very important that we decide not to merge it because that allows us to split the handle so we can trim it down to the cup and then combine them at the end so that it could be 3D printable or sent to some sort of manufacturing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a new part like normal. Like normal, there's nothing here, but we're going to need two planes if we're going to if we're going to do the swept a handle with a profile. So I'm going to turn on my top plane here and I'm going to turn on my right plane by showing them. I cannot show them too. I can just leave them. But this gives me this nice line here. Don't let this line deceive you. It doesn't actually exist. It's just showing where those planes intersect. If I want to look at things straight down from the top plane, I'm going to choose top plane and I'm going to press normal too so I can look straight down on it. And if, if I get a little bit lost there, what I'm trying to do is sketch the cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the cup, and I want to sketch half of a cross-section of a teacup, because I'm going to revolve it around its center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch, and I'm going to start with three straight lines. So I'm going to use the line tool. Now this right here, it doesn't know which plane I'm in because I didn't pre-select it, so I'm going to choose the top plane. This right here is the plane that I'm going to draw my handle cross-section on, so I'm going to slide my cup over so that th my handle will go through this plane. <laughs> So I'm going to start with a straight line, and you'll notice that if I get close to horizontal, it will lock with a little yellow bar there to show that this is a horizontal line on the top plane. I want a horizontal line, and then a vertical line, and then another horizontal line. That will give me the top of the cup, the center line, and the bottom of the cup. That way the cup won't flip over or tip over or do anything like that. Now it's doing all sorts of interesting things because I'm still drawing lines with the line tool. Maybe I don't want to be. So I'm going to hit escape on the on the keyboard. To draw the shape of my teacup, I might want to look at some teacups or think about some teacups. I'm going to use a spline tool. I like splines for curved lines. You can also use arcs, like tangent arcs, center point arcs, three point arcs. Tangent arcs are really nice at drawing smooth lines, but splines are really easy. If you just start with a spline, you can click here, and then every point you click will be a point on the spline. And if you finish your spline, and you hit escape to finish, and you don't like the shape of it, you can always grab these points. Let's see if I can grab it. Grab this point, and then adjust it. You also have these little handles here, so I can adjust which direction things go on the spline with those points. I can also adjust the strength at which they go that direction by dragging them a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. I want to make sure that I have a nice teacup shape here. If this corner here isn't in the 45 to 135 degree angle realm, you're going to have problems later. Um, and you won't probably be able to pour tea out of it very well. So here is my cup. So let's check my outline. Where am I at? Sketch cup. Done. Now it's time to revolve. So. Uh, you can close your sketch and then go into features and revolve, but if you're in a sketch and you go to features and you choose revolve, it knows that I want to revolve the sketch that I'm in, so I don't need to tell that again. It says, what is my axis of revolution? That's the line I revolve around. I want to choose the center of the cup, and it will make a cup. Pretty simple. Check mark. That's how I use revolve. Every single one of these things that we're learning, we can also cut things that way. So we can make a revolved cut, but if I have something that is the same all the way around, if I cut it like a cake and it has the same cross section all the way around, then I probably want to revolve that. Let's shell it now by choosing the top surface. I'm going to choose a, a thin cup here. I'm going to set it to one millimeter. Um, a lot of the tutorials I saw about making a cup or a mug in SolidWorks kind of cheat and make it really thick so that you can't tell where the handle 
uh, enters the cup, but we're going to be a little bit more clever about it than that, I hope. Um, and we're going to add our handle and then trim it down. So I've got my cup. Now I'm going to go back and check my outline. Sketch cup, revolve, shell, now sketch handle. So I want to sketch the handle on the top plane. I'm going to select the top plane. Uh, when I select it, I'm going to choose normal too so I can see it nice and straight on. And when I draw it, I'm going to use the spline tool because I want my handle to be a curve. Now some people might click right here and make it coincident to this uh, cup of surface and that actually causes a problem. I'll show you in the, at the end of the video with somebody who has done that and how we're going to fix that problem. I'm going to make sure that my handle goes all the way in. So I'm going to start inside the cup. And as I'm drawing, I'm thinking about the handle. I don't want it to go too low like this or even close to too low because I'm going to add a thickness to it. I don't want the handle to be touching the ground when I when I put the cup down on this flat surface. So there's my handle. I'm going to hit escape to stop my spline. If this is my handle shape, I could be done right now. I could just sweep this with a circular pattern with a circular um, profile. But if I wanted to add a custom profile so that if I slice this at some point, it wouldn't just be a circle. I can draw one of those, but I need to draw it in a separate plane. It needs to be at a 90 degree angle to this, and the spline needs to go through the cross section. So I'm going to draw it on this right plane here. That's why I've positioned my cup this way. If you don't have your plane in the right spot, you can create a 3D plane, but it's a little bit tricky. I'm going to close this sketch because I'm switching to this plane. You can see this right here is where I want to target. It can be hard to draw at an angle like this, so if you're drawing straight on, it can be really hard to see where you're at. So sometimes you're going to miss, and that's just sort of how it is. You can try drawing at an angle. You can try drawing like this. You can you can hover over here and see that that's where my line is. I'm going to draw. I'm going to use a hexagon, and I'm going to draw it. And I could lock it someplace or make it coincident, but I'm not going to try and do that. I'm just going to leave it loose so that I can move it around if I need to. I need to think about how thick I want my handle to be. Okay, so I made my hexagon. I'm going to exit that sketch. So I look at that. I happen to hit it exactly right, but if you are off to the side, your sweep's not going to work. So how do I fix that? If you're off to the side, you need to move that sketch. So I'm going to edit the sketch. I'm going to select all that stuff by drawing a box around it. I'm going to choose Move Entities. It automatically fills in all those things I've selected. I say From To, and I can click where I'm moving it from, and then I can click where I want to move it to. And that's how you move something. So I've got it in the right position now. I'm ready to I'm ready to sweep. So I'm going to go back to the features menu because I'm making a new feature. Sweep bo swept boss space. You can see by default it says sketch profile. So I'm going to choose the shape that I want to sweep, and then I'm going to choose the path that I want to sweep it on, and that will make my handle. Now there's a couple of issues that you're going to see here. You see the handle doesn't go all the way. That's because it, by default it goes only one direction. If I choose the other direction, I'm only getting that part of the handle. If I choose bi-directional, it'll goes both directions. Okay. I can also, you can see this is where if I didn't draw the hexagon, I could just switch it to a circle. And then all I got to do is set how big a circle I want. And I can have a circular one too. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to do a sketch profile. I'm going to use this right here as my sketch profile, this shape. I'm going to set it to bi-directional so it goes both ways. Now this is where things really matter. Before I click the green check, see where it says sweep, no merge. Okay, so if I am going to want to trim this, I don't want these chunks of the handle that are sticking in here. By default, most of the features tools like Sweep and Revolve will merge with what you already have. So it won't make a separate piece. So if I click the check mark right here, what's happened is this is now merged with this. Let's hide some of these planes here so we can see things. They're all one piece. So I can't now split this with this surface because there's no surface there. It got merged all together. So if I did that by accident or um, I need to go back in and I need to edit the feature. But if you're still in there because you realize there's a problem, you go to options here and you just uncheck merge result. That's all you got to do. If you uncheck merge result, what will happen is the exact same thing looks like it happened, except for there's two separate pieces here. I could even move this and pull it out. Uh, I could do all of that. That's why we go to analysis preparation. So these things now I can do with two different surfaces because I was careful and I made sure there were two separate surfaces. So, for example, I can do what's next on my list, which is split. Split 
takes a trim tool, which is a surface, and cuts a body into multiple pieces. It's, it's remembering my preferences here. Yours is probably set to all bodies. The trim tool I'm going to use is the outside of the cup. You can use the inside of the cup, but I'm going to use the outside. And instead of doing all bodies, I only want to trim the handle, so I'm going to choose Selected Bodies. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click on the handle. When I push Cut Bodies, it's going to make that into three different bodies, three different shapes. Body 1, Body 2, Body 3. Yours might be numbered differently, but you can just click on the ones you want to get rid of. It will automatically select them here. You can see there's the cut symbol here. And I want to choose this. This by default is off, but if you, you want to consume cut bodies, means it's going to get rid of those two pieces. So when I click the check mark, those pieces are gone. They are still separate, though. I can tell they're separate because if I choose move and I choose this, I can move the handle without moving the cut. And that is not what I want to be able to do. Because if I 3D print like that, the handle will actually be like that. I'll pull the handle right off the cup. It won't be attached. It won't be one, one, one object with one inside and one outside. So now I need to do that last step to make sure that they're all one object and it's combined. Combine's a little bit odd in SolidWorks. Combine, you can actually add, subtract, or what they call common, which I would call intersect, where it leaves only where they overlap. This will put both objects together and get rid of any interior barriers. This will get take one object from the other. So I'm going to add in this case. I'm going to click on the two bodies. I'm going to click the check mark, and then I have a teacup. Once you have a teacup, you should know how to, with loft and, and revolve and sweep, you should be able to make a whole tea set. Um, but if you're having trouble with your teacup, you might end up in the boat that my student was in here. This teacup looks pretty good. It's hollow. There's no parts sticking out on the inside. But you'll notice, if we zoom in, that they have set their handle to be coincident with the outside of the cup, which creates these weird gaps, because when you sweep that profile, part of it goes into the cup. It doesn't quite stick out because it's only barely into the cup, but part of it doesn't even attach to the cup. So that's no good. You can see they also used a circular profile, even though they made a hexagon. I think they maybe couldn't figure out how to do that, but we, they could switch it. They could always change things, because you can always go back, and you can go in here and edit the feature, change the way you did it. But I'm actually going to go in here, and I'm going to drop down to the sketch level. And I want to edit this sketch, which means that all of my features are going away. These little green icons here mean that these lines are coincident. This point is coincident, which means that it's stuck to there. No matter how I edit things, it's always going to be stuck to there. If I move this edge, it's still going to be stuck to there. So if I want to get rid of that relation, I can click on it like this and choose Existing Relations and just press Delete on the keyboard. Now, I can move that line so it goes inside. Same thing on this side. Select, get rid of the coincident existing relation, and move it inside. That way, when I sweep it, let's exit my sketch, it'll rebuild everything. Now there is no gap, but there is a problem on the inside. So to fix that problem on the inside, we've already learned how to do this, so it should be pretty easy. Analysis, preparation, split. This is my trim tool this is my selected body, cut those bodies, select the parts you don't want. Ooh. Oh, it, oh that's interesting. You can see I, I made a mistake. I was going too fast. When I selected this surface as my trim tool, it only trimmed this part because apparently there was a line here that I wasn't aware of because I didn't make this model. So I'm going to hit X and see what happened there. So when I cut that, it didn't work. So let's try it again. Let's try split. And then when I choose my trim tools, I'm going to choose both these surfaces. So that way, when I choose this body, and I choose cut, I should get three. There we go. So now I'm going to choose these two parts, and I'm going to make sure it says consume cut bodies. And then all i got to do is combine the handle back with the cup. Okay. Let me show you one little extension. If you want to make this look a little bit nicer... Go back into Features and try out some fillets. A fillet allows you to take a curve like that and change it so that it merges. So you can see I made a fillet like that. Now that fillet is pretty extreme. I might, I might want to edit that fillet, and I might want to change it from 10 millimeters, which is the default, to something a little bit smaller. You can get a little preview of what it'll look like. If you're having a hard time telling with all these black lines that are showing you the different surfaces, you can always go up here and change your display style to get rid of the black lines. You can always hide your sketches too. 
So that's Teacup. That's our second project. The next project after this is the Bracelet project. So after the Teacup and the Bracelet and the Vase, you should know all of these four basic construction techniques, extrude, revolve, sweep, loft. You should be able to pretty much make any object you want to be able to make with those things. Um, the only thing that you might need to think about is how to make holes in your object while you use the same exact ways of doing things. Extrude, revolve, sweep, and cut. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out the rest of my videos on uh, the Steam Lab at Voyager.